everybody, Dr. Gundry here with three surprising foods that ruin your health. Number one, here's a shocker, smoothies, fruit smoothies, or eating fruit year round and in large quantities. Yes, you may remember one of my most favorite sayings is give fruit the boot. Now, why do I say that? Interestingly enough, great apes, who are our cousins, only gain weight during fruit season. And fruit season only occurs once a year, even in the jungle. Fruit fructose was designed to make us fat, to make us deposit fat. And it works in a very intricate mechanism that we inherited from great apes. Fructose also is converted into triglycerides. And triglycerides, as many of you know, is actually the worst predictor of heart disease. In other words, the higher your triglycerides, the more likely you are to have a heart attack and develop heart disease. Yes, high triglycerides, not necessarily high triglycerides. Fructose also causes fatty liver disease. And those of you who have been told you have a fatty liver, and now almost 50% of Americans have a fatty liver that they don't even know about, and most doctors don't know how to look for it. And it's from the amount of fructose that you eat from fruit, but also fructose that's been added to most of our fast foods and processed foods in the form of high fructose corn syrup. Finally, my good friend, Dr. David Perlmutter, recently showed in his new book, Drop Acid, that fructose is the driver of uric acid production. And uric acid not only causes gout, it causes high blood pressure, it causes kidney stones, but it actually causes you to gain weight and to hold on to fat. Multiple reasons why you need to give fruit the boot. Let me give you a patient story from last year. I have a patient who's a diabetic. Uh, we were doing very well on lowering his hemoglobin A1C, which looks at how much sugar and protein he's handling for the two months prior to the test. Now this is a gentleman who used to run a hemoglobin A1C of 10. Normal is up to 5.6, to give you an example. We had gradually got him down over a year to about six, uh, a whole lot better than 10. He read a book that said the key to eliminating diabetes is to follow basically a high fruit diet. So he said, hey, what a great idea. Uh, I'm gonna do that for three months before my next blood test, and I'm really gonna surprise Dr. Gundry with the results. Lo and behold, when I saw him, his hemoglobin A1C had gone from six on the previous test to 12, much higher than when we started. And he had gained 15 pounds in three months. So why did he do that? Because he just stimulated his ancient genetic program to take fruit and store it as fat for the winter. Our problem now is that we used to only see fruit in the summer and early fall. And unless you lived in California or Florida, you didn't have fruit the rest of the year. Now we have fruit 365 days a year. We have 747 cargo planes bringing fruit from Mexico, from Argentina, from Chile, from South Africa, all season. So we have all these wonderful fruits but now we have 365 days of endless summer. And all of us are just storing fat for the winter 
that never comes. So that's why I tell you, give fruit the boot. Now, as you know, in my new book, Unlocking the Keto Code, I've got a great option for you to get the benefits of polyphenols in fruit without the sugar. And I call it reverse juicing. Everybody's got a juicer. I know you got one in the cabinet someplace. Get out your juicer, buy some organic berries, buy some organic fruit, put it in your juicer, throw the juice away. It's poison. Take the pulp, mix that in a goat yogurt. Mix that in a smoothie that you make from lettuce and avocado, like my famous romaine, spinach, avocado, and lemon smoothie that's in the Plant Paradox. Take some goat yogurt or sheep yogurt. Mix those into the goat and sheep yogurt you'll get all the polyphenol benefit without the dangerous fructose. Get yourself a silicone ice cube tray. Take that pulp and freeze it. Then you can make delicious frozen ice creams out of that, and there's recipes in all my books to do it. So give fruit the boot, but if you're gonna eat fruit, make sure you reverse juice and get rid of the troublemaker. All right, number two, whole wheat bread. Believe it or not, up until about 30 years ago, whole wheat bread was not on the table. Do you really think the French would have a whole wheat baguette, a whole wheat croissant? Do you really think the Italians up until now would ever have whole wheat pasta? Of course not. They were smart enough to know that the lectin content in whole wheat is much higher than when they took the hull off of wheat. And for 10,000 years, since grains have been introduced in our diet, cultures have consistently tried to make whiter and whiter bread, whiter and whiter pasta, because cultures that did that had better health. In fact, the peasants were given the whole wheat bread while the rich had the white bread. Lectins are present primarily in the hulls of grains. They're in brown rice, they're in whole wheat, they're in whole oats, they're in whole barley, they're in whole rye, they're in whole buckwheat, they're in whole quinoa. Cultures have always tried to get the hulls off of these grains. Now the good news is, Thanks a lot to the plant paradox, companies have realized that alternatives to grains is good business. So you can find breads now made out of millet, out of sorghum, out of tapioca, out of green banana flowers, out of tiger net flowers, and they're proliferating every day. You can find great pastas made out of sorghum flour, out of cassava flour, one of my favorites is Jovial, like a happy person. Uh, it's an Italian company that makes multiple pastas that are fantastic, they've got the great mouthfeel, out of cassava flour. Uh, Capello's, out of Denver, Colorado, makes a frozen almond flour pasta, fettuccine, that's absolutely fabulous. You can't tell the difference. So please stay away from home, whole, wheat, whole wheat bread, whole grains. This is a recent addition to our diet and doesn't belong on your table. Number three food to avoid is milk. Milk does not do a body good. Now, cow's milk makes a baby cow grow rapidly from birth up to a thousand pounds. Milk was designed to make animals grow quickly so that they were safer from predators. How does milk do that? Two things. Number one, milk is loaded with sugar. Yeah, plain old sugar. 
Number two, milk is loaded with growth hormones called insulin-like growth factor. They're there to make the baby cow grow quickly. And the last thing you want your child or you is to be stimulated by growth hormones. It makes us grow. It makes us gain weight. So the combination of insulin-like growth factor and the sugar in milk is just a great way to put on fat. Number two, most cows in the United States are the black and white cow called uh, a Holstein cow. Holsteins make a protein in their milk called casein A1. Cows in France, cows in Italy, cows in Switzerland are primarily casein A2 cows. Cows like Guernsey cows are A2. Cows like Belgian blues are A2. Buffalo, water buffalo are A2. The good news is that goat and sheep milk are A2 containing cow milk. Goat's milk is traditionally called mother's milk because goat milk looks almost identical to human milk in its constituency. So if you gotta have milk, look for goat or sheep milk. Also, we're beginning to see camel milk or donkey milk, which has a similar composition. But stay away from American milk products. Now, as you know from unlocking the keto code, there's another benefit to goat and sheep milk products. And that is about 30% of the fat in goat and sheep milk are medium chain triglycerides, MCTs. And if you've read my book, you know that MCTs from goat and sheep is really the goat greatest of all time in terms of maximizing your health and your mitochondrial function. So if you're gonna have dairy, go for goat and sheep milk products, goat yogurt, goat kefir, sheep yogurt, sheep kefir, goat cheeses and sheep cheeses, and you're gonna be way ahead of the curve. So if you can't have dairy, and I have a number of patients who react to all forms of dairy, there are a variety of delicious tasting nut milks, like coconut milk, like hazelnut milk, like macadamia nut milk, uh, that are really good substitutes. But please, please, please stay away from oat milk. Oat milk is loaded with lectins. And I can't tell you the number of people whose health has deteriorated when they went for the trendy oat milk. All right, that's it for today. Three worst foods that you've got to avoid. I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast. Make sure to check out the next one here. What if you could cut out sugar for a full 30 days? Well, I'll tell you this. You would notice some remarkable changes to your health and your appearance.